There's been quite some excitement about the amino acid taurine and its effects in the body. Ever since a huge study released showing multiple lines of evidence for taurine deficiency being linked to multiple problems in the body. And the fact that taurine levels decline with age. It might be reasonable to assume that supplementing with taurine could combat metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of diseases like cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and more. Fortunately, we don't need to speculate because a group of researchers looked into the matter for us, compiling 25 intervention studies into a meta-analysis for us to dive into to get some answers. If you read the title of the study just now, you'd think that it does combat metabolic syndrome. But I'd encourage you to hear me out because there's more to this story. So taurine has a lot of fascinating mechanisms, most of which have been uncovered on the cellular level, although some of the molecular basis is still a bit of a mystery. One of the chief mechanisms by which taurine is proposed to reduce blood pressure, a uh, risk factor for cardiovascular disease, is through taurine's effects on enzymes in our cells that produce a molecule called hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is implicated in binding a variety of cells that have critical roles in blood pressure control, endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. Endothelial cells being the cells lining the blood vessels and release a number of molecules that influence if smooth muscle cells contract or relax. If these smooth muscle cells deeper in the artery wall contract, then the blood vessel, the artery, shrinks, increasing blood pressure. So you can imagine that lower hydrogen sulfide levels means more of this constriction. Now, taurine affects this by increasing blood hydrogen sulfide levels. We see that evidenced in this study. The black bars are the taurine supplemented individuals, and the white bars are the people not supplemented with taurine, the placebo. As you can see, over the supplementation time, blood hydrogen sulfide levels rise. They close to double, in fact. Interestingly, taurine is not, as far as I'm aware, converted to hydrogen sulfide directly. Rather, it increases the expression, the uh, production of enzymes that produce hydrogen sulfide from other amino acids, a discussion for another time. But here's the data in human cells. This is measuring the enzyme cystathionine beta synthase, which is the enzyme that produces hydrogen sulfide. Clearly, the taurine supplemented cells have greater levels of this enzyme, which is likely why blood values of hydrogen sulfide are elevated in people. That said, though, hydrogen sulfide directly binds to different proteins within the cells and causes changes in behavior. In this case, they can bind potassium channels found in the cell membrane, according to this review. Now, in doing so, it allows potassium to leak out of the cell, and as potassium is a positive ion, it increases the polarity of the cell. <laughs> in, in plain English, it makes the cell more negative. A more negative cell is also called hyperpolarized, and the consequence is that it's less likely to be activated. And in this case, that means greater relaxation of the smooth muscle cell, thereby keeping the blood vessel relaxed and blood pressure low. Is that too much information? <laughs> Sorry, I, I rarely get to discuss the intricacies, but that's only discussing one mechanism by which taurine functions. We haven't even discussed the effects on blood sugar, insulin sensitivity, and more. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave it there because as usual, we might be fascinated by the mechanisms, which I'm happy to cover in dedicated content if you care, but I'd like to move on to the real stuff. What happens clinically when we consume taurine? Let's return to the initial analysis and let's go ahead and open the data. We're looking at a forest plot here of all the studies that looked at blood pressure on the left side. All the numbers indicate the absolute values extracted from each study, but you can honestly ignore that and focus on the boxes and lines. These are the individual results for each study. The lines are the confidence of the results. So there's a 95% certainty that the true effect is somewhere within these lines. The zero line going up indicates no effect of taurine on blood pressure. If the study results lean to the left, it's in favor of taurine. And if they lean to the right, it's against taurine. Okay, but 
that's still a lot to compute by visual inspection. So you can use the main effects diamond, which is the average of all the studies at the bottom. Where does that land? To the left or to the right? That's right, to the left. In addition, the statistics confirm our suspicion with a p-value indicating taurine has a statistically significant effect. So this data, as is, indicates taurine does reduce blood pressure. But as the keen statistics-minded viewers of Physionic will note, there's one study that pulls drastically to the left, the Ahmadian study. The researchers address this by performing a sensitivity analysis, which is where the researchers remove one study at a time and recalculate the effect. And when removing this study, the effect remained. And in fact, removing any of these individual studies, the effect of taurine remained. There's one more important thing that I need to discuss, but as it's true for the other measures that we'll discuss, I'll leave it for my summary at the end. Okay, so blood pressure is improved, but what about something like blood sugar? If we pop open that data again, I won't go over how to read this again, but it's the exact same ideas. And statistically speaking, there's a confirmation that taurine reduces blood sugar. There is also, however, a good amount of heterogeneity, which means that some studies are going one way and other studies are going another way. The Researchers acknowledge this and point out this might be due to differences in the study populations. Since some studies are from Japan, others are from Iran, others are from the USA, etc. Additionally, some studies pair taurine with calorie restriction and compared against calorie restriction alone. Unfortunately, the researchers didn't investigate further, which is often possible through something called regression analysis, another topic for another time. That's two important outcomes related to metabolic syndrome. And I can go ahead and tell you that the same was also true for blood fats known as triglycerides. Now, several things to say, because while this analysis seems pretty cut and dry, well, we saw the diamonds move in the right direction that we wanted. We clapped and we squealed with joy. Is that just me? Okay. Well, the jury will disregard that last statement. The point being, it seems like good news, but there's a few things to consider here, some good and some bad. Before we get into that, the studies used a range of doses from half a gram of taurine to six grams per day with varying degrees of effectiveness. The researchers also get into some of the nuances of dosing, like the relationship between dose and better outcomes. Is more always better? And they went over some more clinical outcomes. All of those nuances I'll be addressing in the extended version of this video, which along with my monthly podcast, written summaries of all my videos, applicable tips, detailed video analyses, product recommendations, and more is part of my Physionic Insiders. I'd love to have you aboard if you care to join. The link is in the description. In addition to dosing, the researchers did a few things well and a few things I wish that they had considered because it makes the study weaker without them. First, I really like the fact that the researchers included clinicaltrials.gov for their search of studies because that means that they likely also included studies that may have not been published. That's a huge plus. That mentioned the researchers included studies comparing taurine against a mix of controls which means that they aren't comparing against the standard non-taurine placebo group only, and not all the studies included were double-blind, the gold standard in randomized controlled trials. Also, the participants were all different ages and health, including people without metabolic syndrome, which just makes the title a little misleading. But there is a silver lining there that I'll get into. In defense of the analysis, even if the criteria encompassed more than just the placebo-controlled studies, the vast majority of studies, well over 80 to 90% of the studies, were placebo-controlled. And while it's difficult to then relate this to people who already have metabolic syndrome, it still speaks to metabolic syndrome as a whole, potentially in preventing it. I do think greater specificity here would have been better so that we can make clear judgments on the data and define who this applies to. The researchers also made two more mistakes. One, they failed to perform a subgroup analysis, 
to determine if one group might receive outsized benefit and another not. This is especially true when looking at such a wide range of people. Second, as far as I could tell, they didn't mention the statistical analysis that they used in the meta-analysis, which makes some difference on how we interpret these results. I cover all that kind of stuff in my course on how to read and apply studies to your life, by the way, also linked in the description. So where does that leave us? Well, I'd like to see more rigorous meta-analysis done to confirm these results, but assuming that this stands, taurine offers a mild protective effect based on the metrics that we looked over up to now. Blood pressure, blood sugar, triglycerides. I say mild with one exception, because it reduced blood pressure by about four points, it reduced blood sugar by almost six points, and the greatest effect was on triglycerides, where it reduced triglycerides by 18 points. So overall, not bad, but not earth shattering. Of course, we're limited here to these clinical outcomes and there may be other benefits like those that I discuss right here. I'll speak with you over there. Mm -hmm.